Hi, everyone. Um, it's great that some people are posting their introductions. Maybe everyone could do that. We could just wait a few more minutes for others to arrive. Hi, Keith. Are you, are you ready on your end if we get started? Okay. Um, I hope everyone yeah. can hear me okay. This is Beth from Pace University in New York, and I'm here with my great colleagues, uh, Samantha Egan and Linda Ansendig. And let me know if you can hear okay. Uh, we're really excited to have this nice group together. It's just great to have people from all over the world join us. And we've been so pleased by the uh, the numbers and the conversations in Facebook. I just checked before, we're up to 144 members. So it's really a nice group. It's great exchanging ideas with everyone. This is a really informal group for those of you that are first time joiners, joiners here. And we encourage you to chat freely in the chat area, introduce yourself uh, and your colleagues if you haven't already. And um, we look forward to sh sharing a lot of good ideas during this meeting. And to kick us off, uh, we have Christina Hoffner um, sharing some of the, um, the new features coming up in Mahara 1.8. So I will turn it over to Christina.
Give me hello, hello Al, and give me just a, just a second, please. I'm, I'm trying to talk as, as loudly or as, as best as possible, but we'll see how it, how it goes. Unfortunately, I lost a little bit of my voice today, um, starting yesterday, but um, let's look at Mahara. And um, what you can definitely always do is um, contact me on Facebook or also on the wiki or on, uh, so sorry, on the mahara.org so that we can then answer any other questions you might have for 1.8. Okay, so today we are looking at Mahara 1.8 and there are tons of new features in this version of Mahara. And um, just to give you a brief overview of um, what our development cycle was, um, back in April this year, we released Mahara 1.7. And since then, we've been working on Mahara 1.8, um, releasing the first release candidate just last week. And we invite everyone to test it out, to give it a try, install it either on your own test servers or also um, play with our uh, on testing instance where you can where you won't be able to test every feature simply because you won't have site administrator access but at least you'll be able to test a number of the features that you can see on the front end so hopefully once um, we are confident um, that the release candidate is pretty good and that there are no major bugs anymore that people report we will release Mahada 1.8 later this month um, that depends a bit on how the testing goes and whether lots of people also test it and whether we find uh, many important things. So far, it's actually looking pretty good. And then, of course, once 1.8 is released, we are already going to start on Mahara 1.9. It is very exciting to see that we actually already have a few feature proposals for 1.9, which we could not get into 1.8 due to timing issues. And therefore, um, it will be exciting to work on that new version for Mahara, which will then be released in April next year. And oh, thank you, Willie. Great to hear that you'll be testing over the next week or so. Um, I think we'll still need at least one more week of or uh, one more week of release candidate um, just to iron out a few things that are currently on our list. Um, so, what is actually new in Mahara 1.8? I'll be looking at um, the most important features that you as users will see and, and I'll be glossing over some others but um, you can definitely read up on the individual features um, and, and the link to them in our bug tracker and that is also mentioned in the release um, in the release candidate announcement and what we also do is um, we will apt, uh, we are updating the user manual as well to Mahara 1.8 and um, currently I'm still in the process of doing so, so I'm unfortunately not yet quite finished, but you can already find the first features um, documented um, in the menu. And if you scroll down to new in Mahara 1.8 on the index, you can see the first features that, um, have, that I've already documented and that I'll be talking about today a bit. So one of the first big things that you'll see directly when you when you get to the Mahara site is that we have introduced a completely new icon set. So gone are the um, colorful icons and out come the now modern monochrome icons. And um, these icons um, appear throughout Mahara. Everything has been uh, very closely aligned. Um, there's one style for all icons. And um, what we've also done is improved usability for working with Mahara on mobile devices because uh, previous icons, especially if, if you think back, edit and delete icons, they were fairly small and it was very difficult on a touch device to actually hit them correctly and not hit something else. And um, so we've increased the size of these icons, made the spacing a little bit bigger, making it easier for you to, to really work um, with mobile devices as well, besides already having had the responsive theme. Uh, what Yvonne, our designer, has also done in order to help um, people creating their own themes and um, making their own icon sets is she's written an icon and theming guide that we are finalizing at the moment. And there you'll have the original files 
of the icons available. You'll also have styling information that she used on the icons. Um, and you also have theming information available, which will be quite extensive on how to actually theme a Mahara 1.8 theme. So we'll be putting that up um, sometime soon for the release as well, so that um, if you are in the market for it, theme yourself and want to create it yourself, then you can take a look there and um, get some tips on how to get about it. Um, what we've also included is a feature from Mike Kelly um, that a lot of community members really, really liked. And that is to change our block chooser, our artifact chooser, from having it in the horizontal right above all your blocks to the left-hand side so that you can be more flexible. Um, as you can see here, we've, we've also aligned all the, the icons to um, be monochrome and uh, new. And um, what we've also done is be very space conscious so that you can actually, um, if, if you know what the icons mean you don't, and don't need the text, you can serve some space and fold the um, panel in so that you only see the icons. And then, of course, you can always fold it out to see the individual um, block types within and within a category. Um, the nice thing about this panel is also it does not scroll. So if you have a very long page, um, it'll stay on the left hand side and you are able to actually put blocks um, at the bottom of pages much more easily. Um, let me just briefly scroll back because I missed what Keith said. Um, Keith, could you maybe please increase the chat a bit um, so that it's easier to see? Um, oh, thank you. Um, so Keith had the question, can we push defined content to everyone's dashboard page to provide some common links, etc., maybe as part of the theme? Um, Keith, yes, you can do that as part of the dashboard image. So if I just go back briefly. Um, what you see here uh, under create and collect, organize, share, and network, that is the dashboard image or the homepage info. And um, you can adapt that area quite easily because everything sits in one template page. Um, that is the home info template. And there you can put anything in there that you'd like to put in there for your theme and really um, adapt it to your, uh, to your own institution. Um, going back to that uh, block chooser repositioning, so that is one of the major uh, features in Mahara. It sticks to the left hand side, so there's no scrolling involved. And uh, what we've also done upon the request of users is to actually take out um, text box and image and highlight those in particular because a lot of users said that these are the two items that they put into their portfolios most. And therefore, it is just easier not having to go into a submenu in order to get to them. So we definitely would like to invite your feedback on this artifact panel, but actually any other 1.8 feature and see how you go about them, whether you like them, whether further changes would need to be made, and so on. Another great feature that we now have in Mahara 1.8, which uh, we based on uh, Mike Kelly's work from the University of Arts in London as well, is the flexible page layouts. Um, that is also something that people have been waiting on for quite a long time. And as you can see from the screenshot here now, you will not only be able to work with columns in Mahara, but now you can also actually create rows. And you can create your own custom layouts. That feature is already documented in the user manual if you want to take a look at it. So you can be very, very flexible now um, with creating your pages and designing them. However, you should um, keep in mind that some people do view Mahara portfolio pages on uh, tablets, on 7-inch or 10-inch screens, or even smaller devices. And therefore, um, all these layouts will also be squished together and eventually end up in one column. So just be mindful of um, all the responsiveness that can go on. Um, Beth, in regards to your question, where should we share feedback? Um, if it is a bug that you find, please put it on the bug tracker. And if you have feedback on any features, it would be best in the um, support forum on mahara.org so that everyone can see, see it there. Um, Marilena, um, the demo site, 
Das, um, the uh, demo.mahara.org is currently only on Mahara 1.7, so you would need to go to masterdev.mahara.org. But I think we, we found a couple of things uh, right now already during the release candidate, which we have not yet released. So it might be that um, this version still has a small bug in there. Um, but hopefully your IT guys will be able to install a version temporarily for you. But um, the more changes we make once we bring out a new release candidate, we will also update master.dev.mahara.org. OK. Next feature is full text search. That is something that has been in the making for a very long time. And um, we are really, really grateful that we could implement this feature thanks to funding from the New Zealand Ministry of Education, who funded uh, quite a lot of the features that you see in um, today's presentation. And um, that full text search searches titles, descriptions, tags of everything that has been uploaded to Mahara. Um, uh, but you only see the results to which you actually have access to. So we still um, we, we still respect all permissions, and um, so uh, people get different full text search results. As you can see here from this uh, screenshot, from from this uh, mockup, so the eventual feature looks slightly different with the um, with the tabs. It um, we did not just only implement full text search, so kind of one search and then you have to scroll through, but also faceted search so that you can drill down into individual components that you're most interested in more easily so that you can either just see only text or only media, that you only see portfolio pages, users or groups. Um, and as you can see from the screenshot as well, um, you will see the person's username, where it has been used on which pages, you can also directly jump to the image and then also see tags. And if um, a result returns one of your own pages or um, artifacts, you can also immediately click on the edit button to edit it away. Um, Keith, in terms of full text search CPU and time intensive, um, we are using Elasticsearch, so a Tomcat server would be required. And the initial indexing will take uh, quite a bit of time, especially when you have a very large site. But after that, it's not really going to be too intense. And um, Paul, yes, currently this uh, full text search only exists for Postgres um, databases. Um, for MySQL, we are still missing the triggers, database triggers. And um, we are hopeful that we can implement that feature for Mahara 1.9. And so if you, once, once we have it, then of course there would be the possibility that you backport it to your 1.8 MySQL instance. At the moment, I would not recommend um, moving from MySQL to Postgres just to use full text search, but rather that we make this change. Hopefully, there will be some funding available for that, um, because um, making that change is not much time anymore, whereas um, moving from, Post uh, from MySQL to Postgres can be a large undertaking, and we do not really have any experience at that. Um, in that because um, we at least we, we have not done that move yet and therefore cannot make any recommendations how long it takes, what you need to take care of and so on. So hopefully somebody will get out their development head, knows database triggers very well and can implement it for MySQL. Um, moving on to an, an experimental feature, which is page skins. So that has also been long in the making uh, by Gregor, our premier plugin developer. Um, he has been working on that for a long time, and finally we have it in Mahara core. And um, that allows you to override to the theming styles that you have, and students can create their own backgrounds, work with their own fonts if you allow that on your server. They can also change um, font colors and link colors and so on. Um, we do label it experimental at this moment because there are still a number of um, things that would need to be changed and that would need to be adopted. Uh, because currently skins do not necessarily work well with every theme. And therefore, at some point, hopefully, we'll also have a theme that is made for working with skins so that everything can be overwritten quite nicely. Um, what we are also trying to get done, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish it for today, was actually issue a, uh, yeah, 
have a call for a competition for creating skins and then that the user community can also select the best skins that um, they have voted for. So hopefully within the next few days, we'll be able to um, publish that competition. So get your designer hats on, have a Mahara 1.8 instance or use one that, um, that is available. We'll, we'll make sure that we turn on page skins on master.dev and um, go away and see what you can design. Uh, more information to follow in the next few days then. Um, skins also allows um, institutions and sites to actually create skins so that users can um, use those. You can, you'll can you also be able to import your own skins. Um, so we can also eventually have a skins repository somewhere on the wiki so that people can share skins with each other. And um, take it from there. You can favor your skin. You can choose skins that other people have created on your instance. Um, really, that's a great idea to run a theming competition with your digital media students. So, so it would be very fantastic to get your feedback also on the theming guide that Yvonne has created and how helpful it was or whether anything is missing, as well as for the icon guide. Um, we also have a number of smaller features. Um, here's another one from Gregor that we implemented, and that allows you to link to online publications. So when you're on your resume on books and publications, you can now also provide a URL, which will show up when you have your publications listed, and that URL is then also linked through. Um, you can also upload files to your resume and also to text boxes. So watch out for the attachment um, placement on pretty much any field in the resume and also on text boxes. So making it easier on the resume, for example, to upload um, certifications or uh, certificates that you have received or any references for jobs or internships and so on. We are now also able to embed PDF files and into a page, similarly to making an image or a video directly available on the page, displaying it directly there. We will now be able to display PDFs as, as well. And you can also include multiple PDFs on one page, making it um, very, making it very easy for people to take an initial look at the PDF. Uh, and one feature that also a lot of people wanted is to drag and drop files into their files area. Um, so what you can now just do from any modern browser, I think it is Internet Explorer 10 that is only supported, but then every other Chrome, um, Chromium, Firefox, and Safari browser, um, just open your file browser and drag and drop your files into the files area. And that also works in other places on Mahara and hopefully making it easier for uploading files um, without always just having to click on the Browse button. And um, what we can also do now is um, put tags onto our Mahara created content. In the past, you were not able to tag collections, uh, plans, and text boxes. And that has been rectified now. So you can now also find all these things in your tag search and um, also then um, collect content that you put onto text boxes or plans directly with the tag. And another really big feature is the user import of Leap2A files. You will be able to import Leap2A files into an existing user account and therefore merge portfolios, making it very easy if you already started out at one institution and want to bring in the portfolio from another institution, then you can merge them together and an administrator is not required to upload um, Leap2A files anymore. And um, something now more for the administrators amongst you. Um, we are, were also fortunate enough to implement LDAP Sync. That is a plugin that um, Patrick Poulet has de had developed, which we were um, able through a client to make available in Mahara Core as well. And that allows you now to more easily uh, create user accounts um, if you have an LDAP system and also to, um, allow for groups to be created and then members synced into these groups. That is a really nice feature if you want to prepare things and if you also want to offer a lot of groups and, ask, um, and have an LDAP server where you already group all your users nicely. 
What is also quite nice is that um, in most places you do get a warning when you're not saving content. So in the past, for example, if you accidentally hit the back button or a key combination which took you to the previous page, then suddenly all your forum posts or journal entries were lost. Now you actually do get a warning like in many other app, um, online services these days, asking you whether you really want to leave or whether you want to stay on the page. Just avoiding some of these um, oopses a bit um, and have you having to retype everything. We also make it easier now to add a uh, tracking code and so what Moodle calls additional HTML. Um, due to the security uh, implications though, this is not a front end feature, but um, needs to be set in the config PHP file simply because your usually tracking code is for example added via JavaScript. And um, that just makes it too easy to attack on the front end. And therefore we do want to make um, and we do want to make it very obvious to site administrators that they really need to know what they are doing and therefore it is a config value. And there are of course some more um, features that are that we implemented in Mahara. Um, some very small features, some some still bigger features. Um, also, some features that are more important for um, if you have multiple institutions running on your Mahara site. And um, you can find them all in the release and, and also in Mahara itself. But I think I'll stop here so that we also have some more time for other presenters today. And of course, we've also fixed a number of bugs again, um, making Mahara more, more secure. Um, fixing things that, that have been broken for a bit or for, for only a very short time. And we always welcome feedback from everyone and um, any suggestions for improvements and also bug fixes. Or if you work on your own institutions with developers, um, then please also forward us our uh, your changes so that we can in, um, consider them for inclusion and then have more features in Mahara 1.9. That's it from me. I, I would say, Christine, that, that uh, that's a quite impressive uh, set of new features. Um, I think we could probably take maybe a couple more minutes if people want uh, to ask some additional questions in the chat. But uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know that I can talk our our tech folks here to. Um, setting up yet another server for us to, to check out the release can, uh, candidate or if we have to do that on our rogue server off campus. But uh, I think we might uh, start taking a look at, at some of these quickly. Um, Keith, what, what I usually do is I have um, a virtual machine um, on my computer which um, where, where I just install Mahara on, on a Linux in environment allowing me to easily just not really have to bug our developers as well and that way at least I can test on my own as well yeah. and that's uh, quite easy to set up so that might be a possibility for you. Um, yes and um, Mahara 1.8 is definitely a much bigger release than Mahara 1.7. Um, it's been really exciting to get all these features in and also already get feedback and get some features in that have been um, requested by users for a very long time and so the funding that we received for Mahara 1.8 now was incredible in that regard so that we actually could really implement a lot of features for everyone. So, um, well, if, um, just, just one question from Wooly there. Um, where, Wooly asked where can I find out more about the additional HTML? Um, Wooly, I'll, I'll find the, the review because that is, um, oh sorry, it's actually in the config defaults um, file in your Mahara instance. If you search for additional HTML there, you'll find it, I think it's towards the end, and there you'll also find more information of where to put it in and how to put it in there. That is in the lib folder. So ht, ht docs lib, I think.
Well, well great. Thanks, Christina. You're and, welcome. Um, I will. Um, I'll be brief. I didn't even bother um, presenting, preparing any 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 figures. But I just wanted to give a, a brief update to some of the things that we're doing system wide here at SUNY, or at least things that I'm trying to do uh, system wide. Um, so, you know, for those of you who are unfamiliar, SUNY is a state university system with 64 campuses. And we've been on our campus trying to promote the use of open applications like Mahara and Moodle um, to the larger system. And as part of that, we've been um, hosting a number of the other campuses who are interested in ePortfolios uh, off of our instance. So I'm, I'm actually, Christina, interested to track down what some of those new features for um, multi-institution uh, setups uh, will be in 1.8. Just a, a few uh, new developments. Um, this summer we hosted portfolios for a couple of summer science um, outreach programs, one here at Purchase College and one on the Oswego campus. Uh, and we've gotten some feedback from the Oswego campus. They're, you know, we're very pleased with the portfolio support. So um, that looks like it's going to be an ongoing um, collaboration between our campuses. Um, just recently, um, well, SUNY is, uh, is focusing on this Open SUNY initiative where um, they're trying to focus much more on online education. And we've been having some regional meetings as part of that. And uh, from one of the most recent uh, regional meetings, we're now hosting camp uh, portfolios for a number of classes at uh, Rockland Community College, one of our, our neighbors here in the Hudson Valley area. Um, and, uh, you know, so these are some, some nascent, some initial uh, interactions that uh, we're developing. Just a couple of things on the, uh, on the system level. We are also, SUNY is developing a certificate program in teaching and learning. And we're talking about adding an e-portfolio component to that. So we will be hosting portfolios for that, as well as a grant program across multiple SUNY campuses to use e-portfolios to assess how um, international intercultural experiences in, affect the intercultural competency of our students. So the students will be going on these trips abroad or doing globally networked courses and will be collecting artifacts from their experiences and reflecting on those experiences. So something that's ideal for, for ePortfolios. I think in general SUNY has a lot of buzz around ePortfolios, so we're really hoping to uh, to push Mahara as a solution for a number of our campuses. Um, so, I mean, that's just a brief update. Uh, thanks, Christina, for the note there. Um, yeah, uh, I'll maybe tr track down some of these things. And, um, yeah, well, I haven't quite offered to all of SUNY yet, but, you know, I'm hoping actually to shame SUNY into uh, into doing something more robust with Mahara because if we as a single campus can start offering portfolios to all of these other campuses, you know, what's wrong with SUNY as a system? Uh, why can't they get their act together? So yes, thank you. We're we're working on it. Um, so Beth, are you ready? Did you want to uh, take over? Too. You have our PowerPoint key? It's uh, loading now. Okay, great. Um, thanks, and thank you both, Keith and Christina. Um, great information. It's just so um, so great to get the larger picture of wh where Mahara is going, but then also, you know, with Keith and what we're sharing here, kind of presenting um, on specific campuses how Mahara is being used. So it's just a nice, um, nice combination of material for today. And we wanted to share. Um, an experience we had this past summer using ePortfolio to support kind of a mini MOOC 
uh, experience. You know, as, as you all know, MOOCs are all the rage in higher ed. And um, it seems to us that ePortfolio and MOOCs can go, can go well together. And so um, PACE created a new uh, online course for incoming freshmen. All our incoming first year students were invited to participate. Um, it was no credit, so only 120 students or so registered. Uh, but it was a five-week online course offered in July and August um, containing modules, one-week modules on English, communications, math, and biology, uh, and including an orientation uh, at the beginning of that. So that's what made the five weeks. And uh, what we're proud to share with all of you is, is Mahara was a key piece of this. Um, working as like the, con the, I guess the connecting thread between the modules and with very little instruction or orientation, uh, we were really pleased with how our students were able to uh, develop exciting e-portfolios that help them make the transition from high school to PACE. And although this may be hard for all of you to see, I realize the, <laughs> the type may be small depending how you're viewing this, but um, we want to just show you a couple of screenshots of some of our um, really fine examples of students coming to us, variety of backgrounds, variety of um, learning situations in high school, and how in a very short amount of time this summer they were able to um, make great connections between their prior learning, their interests, um, their maybe in some cases fears and excitement about coming to college. And um, they dabbled in the four, the four content areas and interacted with each other um, in great ways, in exciting ways through Mahara, through the feedback feature, which we're really trying to promote more heavily, getting students to interact in Mahara. Uh, we use the group feature in Mahara to connect the students to one another. And they really took to this so um, easily. And it, it was exciting for us to see because I, you know, I have to admit that has been one of the hurdles for us in the past. Um, we have encountered some criticism from some faculty and students complaining about the user friendliness of Mahara. And um, I feel that in addition to the great improvements that we're seeing, you know, in core Mahara, how it is improving, I feel that students' comfort level with technology in general is improving. And uh, Mahara just was very well accepted in this a very experimental program for us. You know, there was no credit attached. So it was. Um, you know, really voluntary uh, for students to participate, and we received great feedback from students like Kenya here, um, who were able to just make these really exciting uh, connections. I see Keith has a question: How much structure for the student portfolio page? Any templating? Great question. <laughs> we did have um, we did have one of our student interns create a sample page, and we could share that with the group uh, on Facebook. Um, I think that provided a little guidance, and we we. We provided prompts, um, so we suggested to students that they include an image. You can see on Sydney's page, um, she included that Broadway image. We we gave them um, links to Wordle and encouraged them to um, share a resume if they had one and um, post some introductory materials about themselves. So we gave them some prompts. We also gave them prompts to start learning how to reflect because, as we know, um, in the portfolio world, we know that's the key. It's the reflection piece, and we know that this doesn't come just naturally to a lot of our students. So we try to scaffold it and, and try to um, help our students to be able to um, start that kind of reflective thinking and writing in their e-portfolio. And we've also worked with the other faculty teaching the other modules. Linda and I, um, with strong support from Sam, did the English module. So we started it, um, you know, with the cohort, and we think that helped. But it was carried through um, through the other, the other modules. Uh, can we have a look at the MOOC? Oh, um, that's a good question, uh, Olena. I have to find out if I could give you access to the MOOC. We, um, we did it through course sites in Black, which is the free version of Blackboard. Um, although we really just use that as in the English module anyway, as kind of the anchor where students self-enrolled. But we conducted for the English module the bulk of our work in Mahara. We used the discussion area and I mean, the forum area and uh, the feedback tool. So we were really pleased with how much of the module, at least in English, we could run right through Mahara. Uh, but I'll, I'll have to look on that if we can share. I, I, at this point, the course site's MOOC may be closed, um, but we are hoping to do it again next summer, and perhaps it will be even more open. I think that's the plan. This summer, it was only open to 
um, incoming pay students, but the, the two-year plan was to have this eventually open to all students making that transition from high school to college. And again, we, you know, it was really nice because what we're trying to highlight here just in these brief slides is not just the screenshots of Mahara, but also kind of some of these um, quotes showing that the students were really getting into that reflective um, mode um, so naturally and so easily. And they were so appreciative for this opportunity um, to get connected uh, with each other and get connected uh, with us. And as this student said, um, finding her own voice. And certainly we feel that ePortfolios help students to do that. And Sydney was able to start doing this even before she officially started at Pace. And so we feel like for a student like Sydney, this is really going to give her a head start um, into you know, higher education and beyond. Uh, Olena is asking great questions here. Who is supporting on your campus academic affairs, faculty? Yeah, this initiative came out of our Arts and Sciences College. And um, it, it, it did have a lot of support, but it also had a lot of skeptics. And unfortunately, you know, we yeah. fell a little short in our, and what we were hoping to do, we were hoping it would carry one credit um, if students chose to come to PACE. And it was just too new and too experimental. Nobody wanted to commit to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. 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 The other deans resisted giving credit for the course, which of course made it less, uh, less uh, appealing to some of the students. So we had a lower rate of completion. One, one idea we have for going forward would be to have this course have the option of being one credit and um, have students be able to use this course in place of our required freshman seminar course, which right now all, all incoming students are required to take in the fall. Um, but what we'd like to propose is that students who successfully complete this, and successful completion would be pending their um, work being uh, reviewed with a rubric through through ePortfolio, um, have those students um, satisfy that one credit with this work and then maintain an advisor relationship with one of the instructors who, who, who taught the course. Um, because that's another key to University 101 for us is um, getting connected with a faculty advisor. Um, so I see Elena asking about tenure promotion. Yeah, we, we also use uh, ePortfolio for tenure and promotion too. And we do hope that that will carry through and get faculty excited about using ePortfolio for their teaching um, beyond tenure and promotion. And I see Keith, uh, the outcomes for the freshman course. They, they have um, many um, objectives for the freshman course, I think, which is part of the challenge. They're trying to satisfy a lot of needs. Certainly one of the big ones is making the transition from high school to college, just like this course. Um, but um, Keith, I'm not sure actually if you're talking about our pace prep or our University 101. But in any case, we're trying, we're trying to make the case that using ePortfolio is really ideal um, for this kind of transition course, getting students um, off, off with a great start with reflective thinking, um, collecting and displaying their artifacts. We had students, uh, as you see in Rihanna's, um, Rihanna Chase's case, um, using the academic materials page. And as you can see, the students just really took to this. Um, and using combination of um, visuals and text and images um, really made for some very exciting e-portfolios in a short amount of time. I think wasn't, I'm sorry, what was the question? Oh, okay. Yes, um, Christina, um, um, I see your question. Uh, yes, and I have followed up with students. In fact, that's how, how I um, received some of these quotes because I followed up with students a couple weeks ago when I was writing your newsletter article and I asked them how, how it was going. I encouraged them to um, stop by to say hello or call me and, and that's where we gathered some of these just great, great quotes um, just even a month or two later where students were able to say it was a great experience even without the credit and we're just hoping that we can um, continue this initiative going forward and, and perhaps have some credit attached and continue to grow the um, excitement around ePortfolios. So I hope that was I hope that was helpful. We we would like to encourage others in this group um, to kind of share different ways that they're using Mahar on their campuses. Um, so hopefully some of you maybe at a future meeting want, might want to do something similar, just like this, some screenshots, some some um, testimonials from students. And uh, two years ago, the MUG group had a student showcase 
So I'm wondering if maybe we could look to do that again this spring. And looking at our agenda, I think we some other topics we wanted to talk about with this group, um, planning for next summer. Um, some of you were at ABLE this past summer, and it was great. We had a, a nice uh, mug meetup at a lunch table, and I talked to Trent Batson about trying to get us some meeting time. He did say that meeting time, if we tried to meet before ABLE, would cost us, and since we don't really have a budget for mug, um, kind of the free way to get us all together would be to consider submitting another proposal, similar to what we did two years ago. And um, we could suggest uh, some kind of panel, uh, like we did two years ago, or we're completely open in case the group has other suggestions. We are such an international group, so we, we recognize that not everyone can join us at ABLE, but I wonder if this time around, if we propose some kind of panel or presentation, perhaps we could have some of our international muggers um, joined by Skype or send in um, uh, videos ahead of time so they could really be part of the panel in some, in some way. I don't know if people want to well, share suggestions via the chat or Keith, do you want to join in? Well, I was just going to say, Beth, last time the panel was very much about MUG itself because we were just getting started. So, um, you know, maybe this time it could be more focused on ways MUG members are using portfolios on their campuses, but also how maybe the ongoing MUG interaction is a resource for supporting those, those efforts. Great idea. Great idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, we could propose um, a few topics to be part of a session and then maybe request a longer time slot so it could be part presentation and part just kind of open forum. Yep. And Christina, I see your suggestion about meeting, at, perhaps meeting at an alternative site in the Boston area, which is true, yes. We could reach out to some of our connections through C2L and some of our Boston colleagues to see if maybe we could find other meeting spot. That's a great idea as well. Uh, we could certainly do again the lunch. The lunch idea worked out great, but I think it would be nice to be able to have um, another venue where we could talk a little bit more at length. And I guess we could just open it up in general. Um, if any of you have suggestions about MUG, in, just MUG overall, how we can connect, share strategies, challenges, etc. At this point, I'm proposing that we have our next meeting in January. We're kind of keeping the pattern of meeting four times a year or so. I don't know if anyone has any feelings on that either. <laughs> We've got, I mean, there's the, the numbers and the conversations in Facebook are really impressive, so it would be great to find ways to connect with that group. And even if folks can't make the meeting, maybe we can have people share uh, content or video with our group um, in asynchronous ways, too. Mid-January? Okay. Great, Elena, we're, we're very happy to have you. <laughs> yeah, if people do want to uh, you know, get in on, um, on the audio, I just uh, opened up the uh, microphone to everyone. So if you want to, to, to hop on rather than type in the chat, um, feel free to. Yeah, yeah we'd, we'd be happy to. Uh, organize site visits with other New York City schools, schools that are in this area. Yeah, Christine is mentioning um, we could, if there's a group, a concentration in the New York City area, uh, we'd be happy to set up a meeting anytime, but, uh, you know, assuming Christine is making the trip again, we could also try to do it before or after ABLE. And that's, well, that might work well. 
That, that's similar to what we did two years ago when I hosted the, the group on campus uh, right after ABLE. So. Right. Yeah, we'd be happy to do that um, here at PACE or help to organize it at some other location. Yeah, unfortunately, I won't be at Educause this time around. So, George and Ellen, you'll have to convene the mug table. <laughs> Elena, I think our colleague Jim Stenerson, um, who is the director of our CTLT attends pod. So you might be able to meet up with him there. If people are going to conferences um, around professional development or technology topics, you can post through Facebook and try to see if others are attending. I think that might be a good way to figure out if you can run into other Mahara folks at these different conferences. Okay, I think I, I don't have anything to, else to add at this point, but I want to say thank you so much to everyone that attended, and thanks to Keith for hosting, and Christina for presenting such great stuff despite your, uh, <laughs> your weak voice. Um, your message came through loud and clear, so we appreciate that. And I guess if Keith's okay, we could keep the conversation going in the chat for the next few minutes. Yeah, we could do that, and I just want to echo uh, Beth's uh, thank you to everyone, and... Uh, and to Christina, um, really looking forward to 1.8 now. And Keith, you'll make this available on Facebook for the group? The yeah, I mean, it shouldn't require much editing, so it should be pretty much available as soon as I can um, um, get into uh, Adobe itself and uh, and um, make those changes. <laughs> yeah, Christina, I imagine you are looking forward to uh, having the stable release behind you. <laughs> 